Hi everyone. So today we are going to cover game theory. Uh, earlier I planned not to cover this uh, theory because I have been asking my students only by providing the notes to go through it and cover it on their own. Uh, of late I started realizing that there are a lot of uh, times when we are actually mentioning game theory and I feel that it can create a lot of confusion if it is not understood well. Uh, so today in this video, I'll be describing very brief briefly about the application part of game theory. I won't be discussing any example per se, but in case if you happen to Google or go on YouTube and just type uh, game theory in international relations, then you will see the ongoing issue of Russia and Ukraine explained very well through game theory. Um, so without further ado, I'll start game theory and first I'll start with uh, some historical background or origin of this theory. So fundamentally, uh, game theory is a branch in mathematics, right? It started from mathematics. About game theory, the first systematic work was published by Newman in 1944 and um, Morgan Stern. So these were the two who published the games. Um, I'm not going into their key work. Then in international relation, game theory came in 1950s or 1960s. Now remember that the game theory is not only limited to econ, maths or international relation. It, it's in computer science, biology and lot of other streams also have been applying game theory. Right now, um, this prisoner's dilemma, which is very famous game in this game theory this is actually formulated by mathematician um, a w tucker right so uh, he is the one who formulated this game now if we see that where can we apply this game theory then this is basically applied on decision making right if you actually uh, see international politics then lot of time uh, state actors, they are just um, playing an important role in implementing the decisions, right, on the other countries or taking a better decision for themselves. How decisions are taken in a situation of conflict, it tries to predict the strategies and steps of groups of individuals involved in a conflict. So this is basically what the game theory um, does all about, right? It just predicts the next moves, strategies and uh, create the whole scenario that how a state actor can move in a particular direction. So this is what the game theory is about. Now, when you, um, when, when you think about this prisoner d dilemma, then I'm sure you might have heard about chicken's game also right and you might have wondered that uh, are these two the part of game theory so yes actually they are the three games of game theory one is prisoner's dilemma second one is tag hunt and the third one is chicken's game i'll tell you in briefly what these three games are all about and how they are applied on the decision making now, when I go further, then the game theory is actually further bifurcated into two kind of uh, um, outcomes, right? So the outcome can be seen either in zero sum game where one will win and the second one will lose, right? Or it can be seen in non zero sum game. In non zero sum game, both can win or both can lose, right? So one, remember zero sum game, win lose, non zero sum game, win win or lose lose situation. Now, we'll go further and start with prisoner's dilemma. Now, here prisoner's dilemma is a standard example of a game analyzed in game theory that shows why two completely rational individuals, remember that these are the rational individuals, um, might not cooperate even if it appears that it is in their best interest to do so, right? So, these two individual or group, they take rational decisions to arrive at best outcomes for them but the outcome they arrive at last is not the best for them so this is what this whole about uh, prisoner's dilemma it describes a situation where two people are put in different cell right cell um, imprisoned and can't communicate 
the police need uh, needs a confession from one to get the other so they offer a deal to the prisoner now here this is the cell right and i am um, making two imaginary uh, persons over here one is ram second one is sam uh, are represented by ram as represented by um, sam right so now uh, uh, police has actually kept in different cell right you see this one as the cell where they can't communicate with each other right so um, they offer a deal uh, to the prisoner police offers uh, deal to the prisoner and uh, in that deal either they can be um, silent which means don't confess or one has to confess right um, now the main concept is the difficulty for two partners to stay in cooperation with one another and trust one another they have to trust one another and they have to be silent also now here there are the different scenarios now what the police says police says uh, first uh, uh, to ram pol police says that hey ram in case if you will confess right this is the cell in case if you confess then you will get zero years okay of imprisonment and in case if sam goes quiet then he will get 10 years of imprisonment clear vice versa it tells to the other uh, prisoner here and it says that in case if ram goes quiet then ram will get 10 years and in case if Sam um, confesses, then Sam will get zero year. So I hope that you understood these two opposite things, right? That in case if one confesses, will get zero and another one gets quiet, then will get 10 years, right? Now, then police says that in case if both of you confess, then both of you will get five years right and in case if both of you don't confess then both of you will get one year right so opposite to this right here now uh, the best situation could have been this where both they are getting one one year but now to get this one year both they have to be quiet they have to trust each other which they do not do it and they end up getting five five year they both confess thinking that this would maximize their benefit and they both happen to get this five years thing so this is what's happening around the world um, if you take this um, nuclear race example then this is what has been hap happening where both the countries or the number of the countries they have been increasing their nuclear weapons just thinking that the other country is also doing so right so arm race which has been just going on since cold war this is a best example of this prisoner's dilemma where both where the parties are not trusting each other and they are working in silos right so this is the example of this prisoner's dilemma then further to this one the second game comes which is of chickens game now chickens game means that both the countries or both the groups both the drivers they are racing racing towards each other they are competing okay uh, with one another now they reach to a certain point where they feel that in case if one will swerve that means you, if one will take a u turn then that person would be called a chicken or coward, right? So no one wants to take this one. Both they just keep going on. You have the, situ the current situation of Russia and Ukraine. The war has been just going on from past seven months because they don't want to be called as chicken or the coward. You have many more situation, North Korea, which has been just increasing its nuclear weapons. The, this is the situation of security dilemma as well as chicken scheme. I hope this second game is also clear to you. Then we go, uh, we go to the third game, which is called as tag hunt. Um, so this tag uh, uh, hunt game, this describes the conflict between safety and social cooperation. Okay, so this is safety versus social cooperation. A situation when two individuals go out on a hunt, each can individually choose to hunt a stag 
or hunt a hare right so either they can choose to hunt hare or a stag now if one person chooses to go for this one then the rest of the people can go for the stag or individually they they will go for that one if an individual hunts a stag he must have the cooperation of his partner in order to succeed right it's a big um, hunting game an indi an individual can get a hare by himself but hare is worth less than a stag right because stag can just fill up the tummy of everyone right so this is the group of self this is a game of selfish gains versus collective good uh, good so a st stack hunt is a game with two pure strategies which is called as nash equilibrium one that is risk dominant another that is payoff dominant the more uncertainty players have about the action of the other player the more likely they will choose the strategy corresponding to it so this game will talk more in the sense of the collective good or the selfish gain and this is what has been happening in so many uh, conferences with regards to pandemic with regards to environmental uh, conferences where people instead of going for the collective good they happen to choose selfish gains over here i hope this example is also clear now these three examples are giving you a clearer picture in the world that how the world is working right why the cooperation is becoming difficult why people are just racing why they are working more in silos than working together i hope game theory is clear to you in case if you want to watch some um, good uh, relevant examples connected to this one then i would highly suggest you to watch uh, russia ukraine example which is connected to game theory on youtube all right thank you for watching this video